Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and today I'm back with another acrylic painting tutorial. Today we're looking at two concepts, thinning your acrylic paint as well as painting details. So let's start with the former here, thinning out your acrylic paint. Now if you've been watching other acrylic artists on YouTube, if you've seen info from paint manufacturers, or if you just kind of heard it in passing, a lot of times you may have heard something like, you shouldn't use more than 20% water to 80% paint, or 25 and 75, or 30 and 70, whatever it happens to be. It's something along the lines of this ratio of, if you add too much water, it destroys your acrylic paint, which isn't true. Well, I guess water is sort of the dissolving agent when you're cleaning up your brushes. Soap is usually in that too. So this thought of adding too much water to your acrylic paint and having it kind of destroy the, the, the paint itself, it's just false. So you might be thinking, okay, if this is so untrue, if, if water is not the problem, then why do paint manufacturers and other artists say that water is such a big problem? Well, the short and simple answer is it's to sell more product. Uh, of course, a paint manufacturer is not necessarily going to want you just to use water. They want you to try their mediums and their gels in addition to uh, just water to paint with. But for someone like me, I actually painted for like 12 years before I even knew acrylic mediums existed. So the only thing I had was water. And in all that time between professional paints, artist grade paints, uh, student grade paints, craft paints, I never noticed a problem by mixing with water. But let's at least talk briefly about what those problems are. Problems that people have claimed to experience. I don't know how, I don't know what they're doing to their paint to get them to experience these things, but apparently it does happen in certain environments. So yeah. The first thing I hear a lot is that, oh the paint, it just flakes and it chips off. This is probably not an issue with the paint. This is, if anything, an issue with your painting substrate, say canvas, paper, wood. Whether you're painting thin or thick, the thing that determines whether or not your paint sticks to the surface is how absorbent the surface is. So if you're painting on canvas, a smooth paper, even a smooth piece of wood, you're kind of going to be okay, especially when you're thinning out your paint. But why do people say this? Well, chances are they're painting on a surface that's a little bit too smooth. For example, I use glass palettes. Now, I wouldn't want to do a painting on the glass palette because that's going to chip off, that's going to scrape, it's going to come off because it doesn't adhere to non-porous surfaces, at least not without the aid of a medium or a gel. Meanwhile, canvas is a cloth, it's absorbent, and it doesn't matter how much wet sanding or extra gesso you add on, that paint is going to adhere and bond to that underlying surface. And of course, if you're using a cheap low-end paint that maybe has a reduced quality binder or perhaps too much water in it, uh, at least not mixed into the paint when you're working, but too much water mixed into the formula, that takes away and breaks apart the binder in the paint. And this is sort of what people are talking about when you add too much water to your paint. But that's only really a factor in the manufacturing of the paint and not so much in doing the painting. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You say, I want proof, Ben. I don't just want you to tell me that thinning out your paint is okay. I want you to show me. I agree. So here is some cadmium red medium paint, as well as three different surfaces. Paper, cardboard, and prepared canvas. So, let's do it. All right, so let's try this out. Glass palette, nice simple round brush, bit of water, and some paint. Okay, so for any basic experiment, you have to have a control. So dry brush, no water, right on the surface. Right, nice dry brush effect on the canvas. A little bit smoother on the cardboard. Kind of in the middle on the paper. That's our control. Now, when I'm painting with acrylic, I'm never usually going directly um, uh, dry brush into paint unless I'm dry brushing. Usually it's just dunk it in water and use that to keep the paint a little bit fluid, a little bit flowy but still keeping it thick. So we're looking at maybe anywhere from a two to a five percent dilution. It's gonna be about the same in terms of application. 
Okay, let's start getting a little nutty. Let's get that to maybe about that 30% mark that they were talking about. Now this is about what they'd say is all the further you should take your paint. And it's this level of this about 30%, maybe leaning closer to 40. This is the same mixture that I usually use when I'm painting detail. And we'll get back to this in a little bit. Nice, simple bit of color. Now, one thing you can do with acrylics is you can use them in a similar way to the way you might use watercolors and really kind of thin that out. So let's get extreme here. Let's get a lot of water here. Make the paint uh, really transparent. <coughs> And as you can see, there's a bit of transparency coming through in that center layer. Now we're really, really watery. But we can actually take this a step further. Forget our pile of paint. Clean as much of that out of the brush as we can. And we're just going to make a big puddle of water and add a tiny bit of paint into it. Now we've got a washy watercolor effect that you can use for glazing, or really anything of the sort. And whether it's pure out of the tube or really thinned out, there's no problem in application. You think, okay, might be a problem in uh, letting this soak in and if it, is it going to chip off. So we're going to give this a little bit of time to dry. But before I do that, I do want to show you one thing, and that is something that people uh, when most people say that mixing with water is bad, this is one of the things that they, they show, and it's part of it, the reason why it's wrong. So at this point, <clears throat> you might want to start working paint on top of paint. But the thing is, with some of these, while they may look dry on the surface, the underlying bond has not completely uh, sealed yet. You can actually see this really well if you have uh, your paint, for example, on glass, uh, while in a day or so, it might be dry to the touch, you might be able to peel it off. After a week, it'll be harder and harder and harder to peel it off as time goes on because that underlying bond is working its way onto the glass a little bit more. So what people do is in the middle of a painting, they'll just start painting on top of something else and they'll do this and then maybe wipe it away. And what you get is this ring this little section here where you have the brush stroke and then you have the section where you wiped it away and then you have this. What you're seeing here is that uh, concept right at work. So you have uh, the some of the paint underneath which is that brush stroke that is the bond that has already formed. Everything else we wiped away is paint that while looked dry and felt dry to the t well, relatively dry to the touch, uh, that paint wiped away because that bond was not completely formed yet. So again, we're gonna let this dry, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about painting details now. So a lot of people, myself included, uh, for a long time would paint with nice uh, big brushes and even maybe go down to something a little smaller, maybe something like this, and be like, okay, I've got that and I'll do this and those are my details. The problem is, is people forget that painting is really just an extension of drawing. <coughs> You're just basically drawing with color. So at a certain point, you gotta put your big brushes aside and grab something perhaps a little bit smaller, even smaller than you might think. Now, when I detail for that uh, purpose, I use uh, liner brushes. Uh, liner brushes are exceedingly thin brushes that have a very fine point to them. A lot of times you're gonna see these actually in the watercolor section because of the short handles. Uh, it's not as often that you actually end up seeing a good acrylic liner brush around. So. Sometimes I use this one. Uh, it's a little bit what I would actually call wider uh, because this is a really good fine detail brush. This brush is super thin, talking maybe oh, 20, 30 tops individual strands uh, in this brush. And it's these brushes that are perfect for detailing. And really, when you take the time to detail your work, it, the uh, painting itself really kind of pops and everything kind of comes forward a lot more. So I have a little bit of sap green here, which I'm gonna use to uh, add some darks on top of this, or it's a red mountain. I don't know why I made the mountain red. Probably because I already had red on the palette. 
And so for this, we are looking for a thin consistency, something that we did around that 40% watermark a little bit earlier. So I'm actually just going to use some of the water that's already here, and I'm mixing very, very slowly, mixing a little bit of little bits of water into the paint. Uh, a lot of times when I do this, I just do a dump, a dick dip of the brush, excuse me, uh, on all that stuff, and uh, I just get a little bit of water uh, that's whatever soaks into the brush. Then I go take that water into the paint, and then do that again. Dunk, kind of shake off a little excess, and just use that little bit of water and go into the paint. Now whether or not you'll be able to do this mix with water, I found, depends highly on your painting environment. Uh, if you're in a very dry climate, such as uh, the American uh, uh, Great Plains as well as the Southwest, you're probably going to have a, a little bit uh, of a difficult time doing this. Also it may affect uh, a little bit differently depending on if you're at high altitude or not. I don't entirely know, I've never painted at high altitude, so you'll have to just work and experiment on your own to find the technique that works for you. So I'm getting this down to a nice fluid consistency, something you might expect out of a fluid uh, or soft bodied paint, probably closer to a fluid than a soft body, but and then you're just using that brush to sketch and add detail. The only downside to using a, a liner brush like this is that you have to grab paint a little more often. Um, it's not... Uh, it's not the best brush for grabbing lots of paint, but it is a great brush for getting those fine, simple, easy details without a whole lot of effort. And you can do short little pulled strokes like I'm doing here. Uh, one of the things that kind of sets a good liner brush aside is whether or not those bristles kind of hold their shape when you push them down like this. If you do this and they spread way out, it's not a good brush, uh, which you can usually kind of test in the store a little bit. A lot of times they have plastic covers on them, but you do want to make sure that you get a, a nice brush that can hold up to that weight. Not that you'll be pushing down with your liner brush that hard very often, but you know, it, it happens sometimes for certain techniques. And to get that fine line detail, a lot of times you're going to pull, but then the bristles will start to spread a little bit. So what you want to do is pull and twist ever so slightly. As you twist, those bristles will sort of stay in alignment and be sure that you get that nice fine hairline. Uh, now it's th something you'll probably be able to see on camera, uh, but uh, that little bit of a twist that I can do, like that, really kind of keeps that point nice and fine. Nice, simple, fine line point all the way down to the tiniest, tiniest little details. Also doesn't really help them a handshake a little bit. You know, I, I do what I can. I can pull and twist a little bit, right about like that. And again, these fine line, simple details, uh, really, they come out because you're using that simple fine line brush. If I was using a bigger brush like this, I couldn't get these lines, I couldn't get these details. And that's really the kind of the concept behind getting those details. Now you can use a fluid or a soft body paint if you have it. I don't. I work almost exclusively in heavy bodies. So I need this uh, ability to thin down my paint on a more dynamic basis without grabbing another jar of medium or something like that. I need to be able to use water, and that's why I do. All right, so let's get back to our samples, which have, at this point, pretty much completely dried. There's maybe a little bit of tackiness up in the, uh, the real heavy body section on the, on the canvas, uh, and there's a couple of wet spots here and here, but we, just, we won't touch those. So a lot of people say, oh, paint, you thin it out, it scrapes off the canvas. Does it though? Let's grab a knife. Let's find out. So heavy body. Ooh, hello. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but I mean, I'm. This is thick out of the tube paint too, and I'm actually getting this off. Maybe, or maybe I'm just scratching the top of it. I actually can't tell. A uh, little bit thinned out. Eh, maybe. Super thin. See, now I'm scratching this paint. You think, okay. Well, so you're wrong. Well, no, the paint hasn't finished the underlying bond yet. Let's go thinner. Now we have the reverse effect. Because this is so thin, the bond is starting to form. I can't get this off at all, actually. Yeah, at least very little. And then the water section, I don't even think I don't even think you could tell if I was scraping that off. So cardboard, 
Nothing. 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 I'm denning I'm denning the cardboard more than I'm scraping anything any paint out of here. Nothing. The so canvas, a little bit less absorbent, uh, at least on the first layer. Uh, when you do paint over paint, then the bond's going to form a little quicker, a little easier. Paper, again, this is paper, cardboard, these are nice, thick, absorbent surfaces. Nothing. 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 Still a little wet here, i got to move over. Nothing. I'm actually, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm scraping the paper here. Nothing. I don't know what people are talking about. Paint, it doesn't scrape off. This, yeah, the bond wasn't finished forming, sure. But it absorbs in, it applies. Thick or thin, it doesn't matter. Your paint will stick. And once again, here's a glass palette. This is high quality acrylic on here. But because it's been sitting for a long time, this has been, I think, two weeks, maybe since I did this, or maybe even one. I don't remember the last time I painted. But this, this is gonna chip off. Because the surface is smooth, and you don't have the underlying bond forming. The paint bonds to itself, but it can't bond to the surface because the surface is smooth. So what did we learn here today? Well, this idea that thinning down your acrylics with too much water is just false. Whether you're using thick out of the tube heavy body paint or something more of a medium or soft body, it doesn't matter how much water you add. You can add a lot, you can add a little, but regardless of how much water you add, uh, if you're gonna paint details, Get yourself a nice thin brush. But you might also be wondering, is there any truth to this idea of adding a something like glazing liquid to your paint instead of water? Well, yes, there is some truth to that. Mixing with an acrylic medium instead of water will make sure that the paint has a much better bond to whatever you're painting on. I know Golden themselves has, uh, I think it's GAC 200, that allows the paint to dry to a harder surface to stick to things like glass or other smooth surfaces. But remember, whether it's cheap paint or expensive paint, this paint in particular, again from Golden, happens to say this. To extend or thin, use Golden Mediums or water. They tell you on the tube, use water. So it's clearly not an issue. So thick or thin or however you paint, be sure to hit the like button if you learned something. Get subscribed if you're not already, and this has been Cinderblog Studios. See you guys next time. Whoops.